In this video, I'm going to show you what happens when you take nasty backyard bucket water with all kinds of alga and protists and contaminants that you don't want in your spirulina and you put it into your mature spirulina culture. Hey everyone, so I've been wanting to run a purposeful contamination experiment for quite some time now. If you're getting into growing algae, growing spirulina at home, one of the main things you're going to hear is don't contaminate your culture. So what I wanted to show you today is I've had this old five gallon bucket in my backyard for about six months now, just sitting there collecting water. And I've noticed the other day that there's some algae growing in it. So what I want to do is take just a small sample of that backyard rainwater bucket algae and put it in with a little bit of spirulina and run an experiment and see if the high pH of my spirulina culture and my well-established spirulina is able to outcompete the backyard algae that I found. So let me show you what that algae looks like. I'll take a look at it underneath a microscope. Here is the bucket collecting rainwater and all kinds of goodies and nasty bits in there. And you can see that there's all kinds of green alga in there. And I'm sure some things you probably don't want to consume. I collected a small sample from the outdoor bucket to view under the microscope and see what's living in it. I also prepared my experiment and control flasks with 40 milliliters of spirulina in each container. I checked the condition of the spirulina and it had a pH of 11, a SESHI reading of 2.3 centimeters, and it looked clear, healthy, and uncontaminated under the microscope. I'm looking at the bucket water now, and at first glance to the naked eye, it's sort of the green part, the algae is a little bit goopy, it's stringy, it's sticking together. Um, it isn't as kind of like a particulate matter, like spirulina maybe. Um, and I'm looking at it under the microscope, 40X, and I'm already seeing some, I believe, protozoa. So little single cellular organisms moving around hunting for some yummies. The control flask is just 40 milliliters of spirulina and the experiment flask has 40 milliliters of spirulina with five drops of bucket water. Without a microscope, the perceived growth of spirulina looked normal and healthy. A slow increase in biomass, good coloration, and no odor. I checked the control and experiment flasks for the next four weeks and it looked the same every week. Healthy spirulina with no contamination. My hypothesis was that the mature spirulina culture will outcompete any contaminants that I introduce from the nasty backyard water that's been sitting out there for months and growing all kinds of things that I wouldn't want in my spirulina culture. I have about 40 milliliters of spirulina in both of these, and I have my control and my experiment. So I checked on my cultures every week, and even after the first week, I couldn't find any evidence of the contaminants. I couldn't find any other algae, protists, or organisms other than the spirulina. So I think the high pH and the mature spirulina culture outcompeted any external contaminants right away and just killed them off. I plan on doing more experiments on how sensitive a spirulina culture is, because I hear so often not to contaminate your spirulina, but I do think the extreme environment of the high pH of a well-established spirulina culture really will outcompete any other organisms. So stay tuned if you're interested in seeing other experiments of me trying to mess up uh, spirulina culture. Thanks.